What's going on, guys? Pistol Pack and Pilot back with another video. Today we're here to talk about the loss of November 987 Alpha Kilo. This is an MD-87 aircraft owned by 987 Investments LLC in Spring, Texas. The aircraft was taking off on runway 36 out of Houston Executive Airport, which is west of Houston near the town of Katy, Texas. The aircraft was a total loss. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, Triple P is back. Everybody has been telling me I need to make a video on this. I was very reluctant to put out a video on this because the crash just happened not even, what, 12 hours ago? MD-87, total loss. Pirate Stacker, my buddy, wanted me to make a video on this. My wife wanted me to make a video on this. And the reason is that even though I am... Uh, a captain on an Airbus 320. Before I flew the Airbus, I did fly the MD-80 series aircraft, and I am type rated on the DC-9, the MD-80 series aircraft, and the Boeing 717. They're all flown under a DC-9 type rating. So I've got quite a bit of time in the MD-80s. I have forgotten quite a bit. However, I still remember quite a bit as well. November 987 Alpha Kilo was departing Houston Executive Airport with 21 souls on board en route to the ALCS in Boston tonight. They were on their way to watch the uh, playoff game. The owner of the uh, company, it was his aircraft, and... Uh, the flight crew, as well as many of his friends and co-workers, I'm assuming, that were on board. During the takeoff roll, there was a video of it, which was uh, shows very little information because it was the beginning of the takeoff roll. I have yet to see any footage of the crash or the second half of the takeoff roll, which is obviously what is going to be pertinent in this investigation. During the takeoff roll, for some reason or another, the plane either did not get airborne or it got airborne extremely briefly. In any event, it crashed north of runway 36. So runway 36 takes off to the north. I'm going to put a picture of the airport aerial view into the video for you to look at, and I will circle the area of where the aircraft went off the runway. So the aircraft went off, crashed for whatever reason, and everybody got out safely. I believe there are one or two people injured. To my knowledge, there have been no fatalities. The aircraft was a total loss. There are a couple of interesting factors with this accident. First of all, weather, winds, none of that's going to play a factor. It was an absolutely gorgeous day in Houston to go flying today. It was clear blue skies, light winds. Couldn't have asked for a better day to go flying. So I don't see weather playing a factor in this incident. The MD-87 aircraft is typically configured for about 150 to 160 passengers. It is an airliner. For all practical purposes, it flies uh, 150, 160 people, and it can do quite well uh, traveling several, several thousand miles from one end of the country to the other. This particular aircraft had been reconfigured with a corporate interior. I don't know what its capacity was, 
but with only 21 people on board and fuel to get from Houston to Boston, I can tell you that their takeoff weight was probably well within limitations. I don't think an overweight takeoff is going to be a factor in this accident either. The next thing that potentially comes into my head is a uh, engine failure on the takeoff roll, possible aborted takeoff um, due to an engine failure. When you take off, you calculate performance data and you come up with speeds. And these speeds are based on many things, including weight, flaps, slats, which is your uh, takeoff configuration. There's many, many factors that go into calculating these numbers. And you come up with a speed called V1, which is your takeoff decision speed. And in theory, if something happens before V1, you abort and you should be able to safely stop on the runway. If something happens after V1, you take it into the air because at that point it is safer to deal with it as an in-flight emergency rather than taking the chances of an extremely high speed abort and potentially not being able to stop on your runway remaining. The runway at Houston Executive Airport is 6,600 feet long. Uh, sounds like a lot of pavement for an MD-80. It's really not. An MD-80 is kind of a runway hog, but again, I would be willing to bet that their weight was not very heavy. I would be willing to bet they had a, a fairly light takeoff weight uh, on this particular day. When the aircraft came to rest, one of the things that's notable, and I will show you in a picture right now, is that the aircraft's thrust reversers are not deployed. Now that could be for one of several reasons. It could be that a rejected takeoff was not attempted. It could be that the thrust reversers were deployed and they successfully attempted a rejected takeoff using those thrust reversers and then they were able to actually stow the thrust reversers and shut down the engines by completing the emergency evacuation checklist. Then there's also potential that the thrust reversers were deferred or permanently disabled, which we don't have any information on that conclusively at this point either. In any event, a rejected takeoff is a possibility. The problem with a rejected takeoff is if it was performed prior to V1, they should not have gone off the end of the runway. Now we come to a potential of a rejected takeoff after V1. The only time that you would ever attempt something like that is if there's a massive, massive thing that will prevent the airplane from flying. In other words, when you're rolling down the runway, you have your hand on those thrust levers. The non-flying pilot calls V1, and as soon as they call V1, your hand comes off the thrust levers because you are committed to taking the airplane in the air at that point. So it would have to be something big that would cause you to abort after V1. Potentially, you pull back and the airplane does not want to fly. Some type of flight control malfunction. Obviously, we're just speculating. This is a crash that just happened, ladies and gentlemen, and there's going to be a lot of investigation for the National Transportation Safety Board to do. However, if the airplane won't fly, you have little options left other than to attempt a rejected takeoff above V1, which could have very easily resulted in the aircraft overrunning the runway as catastrophically as it did. These are all possibilities. Now, what I want to tell you about is a system on the MD-80 that's called the CAUSE, otherwise known as the Central Oral Warning System. This is the aircraft's way of yelling at you to tell you Hey, jackass, you're doing something wrong. Don't attempt to take off. We test the cause system at the gate before we attempt to take off in the airplane. And I will show you a video of what that test looks like because what you're looking for is when you move the thrust levers forward 
and you do not have the aircraft configured for takeoff, the aircraft tells you what's not configured. No. Stabilizer. Flat. Flat. Stabilizer. That's testing the functionality of that system. When you move those thrust levers forward on takeoff, if your flaps and slats are not configured properly, that is the warning that you will get. And then in theory, you're supposed to obviously pull the thrust levers back, abort the takeoff, get off the runway, regroup and figure out what the hell went wrong. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, you would have to be a jackass to take off without the aircraft properly configured for takeoff. Because if you take off or attempt to take off without the aircraft configured, meaning the flaps and slats, at the proper degrees of extension, the aircraft will likely not fly. There's a very good probability you will get to that V1 speed and you will attempt to take the airplane into the air and it is going to either not get off the ground or it is going to get off the ground and not be able to climb out of ground effect and you will probably get the stick shaker and stall the airplane and come back down to the ground fairly quickly and violently. And that is exactly what has happened not only once but twice. There are two crashes that have happened with the same series aircraft. Both of them were MD-82s. One of them was Span Air Flight 5022. It was an MD-82 that took off with the uh, flaps and slats improperly for takeoff. And in this crash, the TOES takeoff warning system did not work. It was not possible to determine why the takeoff warning system did not work. Furthermore, the crew did not utilize proper crew resource management. So there was a deviation from standard operating procedures and omissions during the flight preparation, including failure to complete required checklist. Needless to say, that takeoff did not end well. The second incident was Northwest Airlines Flight 255, another MD-82 that attempted to take off. And once again, the flight crew, uh, it was evidenced by the CVR that they omitted the taxi checklist during the attempted takeoff when the thrust levers were moved forward. That oral takeoff warning was not enunciated by the warning system. Now, here's where it gets interesting. What investigators determined was that the failure of the takeoff warning system was caused by the loss of the 28-volt DC power between the aircraft's left DC bus and the cause unit. The interruption of the input power to the cause system occurred at the P40 circuit breaker. So circuit breakers are numbered with letters and numbers because there's so many of them. So it's literally like playing you sunk my battleship. You go across and then you either go up or down and you find the right breaker. This was the PAPA, otherwise known P40 circuit breaker. The investigators who had spoken with other MD-80 pilots learned that many pilots found it to be a nuisance to hear the takeoff configuration warning while they were simply taxiing on the airport property. It actually was so common for pilots to be annoyed with this warning that they would commonly turn around and they would pull the PAPA 40 circuit breaker. So what they believe happened with Northwest 255 is that the pilots more than likely pulled the circuit breaker, which was the very system that's designed to keep them safe if for some reason they failed to properly configure the airplane for takeoff. 
this was such a common occurrence for the pilots of Northwest Airlines and other MD-80 pilots at that time, for that matter, that they found that the P-40 circuit breakers in the MD-80s were actually smudged from being manipulated so often. In the end, the NTSB was unable to determine if the P-40 circuit breaker on Northwest 255 had been pulled intentionally or if it had tripped and opened due to some type of short or issue with the electrical current to that system. So that's basically where we're at, guys. A tragic, tragic accident today. Thankfully, everybody got out of it alive. The NTSB is going to be very busy. As soon as I saw the pictures online of the crash, I knew that it was a very large airplane that had gone down and this was going to be a big deal. Those are some of the possibilities, in my opinion, that could have caused the issue with uh, November 987 Alpha Kilo. Not saying those are the only possibilities, but in my opinion, those are the most common ones. Like I said, the NTSB has a big job ahead of them. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Pistol Packing Pilot, and I am out. Yeah.